Okay, you know by now in my lectures, I try to give you examples of uh, cognitive processes um, that some people struggle with as a result of brain damage. And one of those is hemi neglect, or sometimes called hemispatial neglect. Now, you already know that attentional processes involve a lot of what happens in your parietal cortex, right back here. But what happens if you have a stroke in your parietal cortex? What happens to your attentional processes? Well, hemi neglect happens. And hemi neglect is when someone's visual system is just fine, but they ignore everything that they see in half the world or a little less than half the world, generally on either the uh, right side of their world or the left side of the world, depending on whether the stroke damaged the left or left or right parietal cortex. Uh, this picture of a man with a beard that's only shaved on one side, this is an example of someone with hemi neglect. It's, he can see his, his visual processes work in terms of the beard that's on the right side of his, or left side, left side of his face, but he just ignores it. And he doesn't order it, ignore it intentionally, it's unintentional. It's just as if it doesn't exist. Does it bother him? Not really. Does the fact that you can't see or pay attention to what's behind you bother you? No. Same kind of thing. How do you test for hemi neglect? Well, I've got to display a, an image on the screen of a very simple test. You just put down in front of somebody a piece of paper with a bunch of little tick marks on it, and you give them a pencil and you say, put a line through each of these tick marks. Okay, that's all it is. Super simple, not an expensive uh, measure. And what you find if somebody has hemi neglect is that they'll only mark the ticks on one side of the piece of paper. Here are some drawings um, of people with hemi neglect. On the far left are a set of examples, a clock, a house, a, a, a flower, that people who might have hemi neglect are asked to simply copy. So you show them a picture of a clock and you ask them to draw a clock, show them a picture of a house, you ask them to copy the, that picture of the house. And what do you find? Well, look at the clock. The left side of the clock is mostly missing. The left side of the house is not very complete. The left side of the flower is incomplete. These are people with hemi neglect. On the right-hand side are some uh, paintings, self-portraits, by a German painter who had a stroke in his parietal lobe. And you can see how his paintings evolved as he recovers from the stroke. So the first painting that I'm pointing to now is the, the first painting that we have, self-portrait that we have of him after the stroke. And you can see there's parts of one side of his head, but nothing from the rest of his head. And then you can see to the right of that, a drawing where there's a lot more detail on one side of his face than on the other. So he's he recognizing that the other side of his face is there, but it's it doesn't have color, it doesn't have as uh, many um, details added to it. Uh, he does something very tricky for his third painting. He does the painting with the head tilted, so the fact that the side that's hidden is something he ignores, so it's very tricky. And then the final painting, you can see that he's gotten a lot of his understanding of um, the side of, um, a lot of his uh, attention is now being deployed to the side of his visual field that he had been ignoring. Okay, I wanna insert a video right here of a wonderful man who has hemi neglect. It takes a little bit of time, but I think you'll be stunned by the video. This is what hemi neglect looks like. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How was your weekend? Pretty good, pretty good. Oh, yeah. I'm glad to hear that. You ready to do some work? Yeah, yeah. All right, well, today I have brought in some equipment from one of your favorite sports, golf. Ooh, yeah. So I have golf tees here, and today we're going to use the golf tees to do a little activity that helps you notice things that are on your left. You've been having a little difficulty with yeah, yeah, noticing yeah. people and objects on your left side. Yeah, Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to work 
on top of this white rectangle that I have down here. Now, before we begin, I'd like you to take your hand and just trace around my rectangle so you get an idea of how big it is and where all the T's could be. Okay, have you reached the end? Uh, okay, keep going. Oh, uh, there you are. Okay. There we go. Uh, all right, all right. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. So the golf tees can be anywhere in this workspace. Uh, okay. All right. All right. So remember, as you're looking for the tees, remember to look to your right and to your left. Okay. Yeah. Are you ready? Ready. I'm just gonna put them on here quickly. Ten. There we go. Okay. All right, John. You may begin. One more. You may begin. Okay. Here's one. Okay. Excellent. There's another one. Two. There's another one. This makes three. <laughs> We're going to fight over that one. That's four. And there. Five. Okay. Right. Do you remember how many I said there were on the board? Ten. Oh, ten. Okay. We have found one, two, three, four, five. Means we have five to go. Do you see any more of the T's? No. You don't. Okay. Well, remember. Remember to look to your left. Do you see any on the left side? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, why don't you take your hand and trace around the outside of the board just to help you remember where they could be again. Oh, run into one over there. Oh, oh there's one. Okay, there's six. All right. Okay, keep tracing all the way over there. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, well, I don't know. Okay, five, oops, sorry, four more to go. Do you see them? No. Okay, Claire, why don't I help you out? Let me take your hand, and here we go. Let's feel over here on the left. How about that? Right there. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, Never. seven, three more. Let's see. Oh. So, hemi neglect. When there's damage to the part of the brain that's involved in attentional processing the parietal lobe. Okay. Now, what else does attention do besides let us know where things are in space? It turns out that when you pay attention to a stimulus, the parts of your brain that are involved with analyzing that stimulus show more activity. Uh, we know this from the lab of Nancy Canwisher, where she came up with these fabulous uh, displays, she and her colleagues, um, you notice you've got a face superimposed on a house. So you can very easily, by shifting your attention, either pay attention to the face or pay attention to the house. Now, uh, Canwisher was the person, is the person who's done the most work on FFA, which we've talked about before, fusiform face area. So what do you think happened to FFA activity as somebody is looking at this stimulus and directing their attention to the face? When you direct your attention to the face in the stimulus, FFA activity goes up. When you look at exactly the same stimulus, but now pay attention to what's the, the house, um, the other half of the display, FFA activity goes down. So the fact that you're, there's a face in your field of view isn't in and of itself what drives FFA, right? It's that the face is something that's relevant, something that you're paying attention to. That really drives FFA even more. That is the end of my series of lectures on attention. Students, head back to Canvas. Everybody else, it's been a pleasure. See you later.